Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I have been a financial analyst, a financial journalist, and currently the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. That is my credibility. This is my fifth piece of investigative journalism based on using what I was trained in a postgraduate level research and development program for proving things by double referencing, researching, and not being invested in the answer, but being invested in the question and allowing the answer to come from looking at the data and letting it unfold. So uh, we've been looking at uh, my motivation was that I saw in the Libya invasion and war and in the Ron Paul uh, campaign, I saw several factors in the media that seemed to be indicating that the same exact instruction to the journalists was transmitted to all networks simultaneously. And so I was, I'm not saying that that is a conspiracy. I'm saying, where did it come from? Do they immediately pick the wire up and imitate each other? Is it promulgated? I don't know, but I know that the result was the same, which is just people were not given the proper information. In the case of the Libya campaign, there were 11 questions that I had about Libya being the most developed country in Africa, how it had poured a lot of investment to Africa with no strings attached, how uh, they had a high literacy rate, how we'd never found out uh, if these atrocities really occurred and how we took a no-fly zone and actually f allowed the other guys to fly. We took a ceasefire where there was an arms embargo and armed one side in the conflict. Uh, there was lots of disturbing questions. So why are we doing this? Is the next question. Um, and then in the case of Ron Paul campaign, all the networks came at the same time, and it literally would cut his name out of questionnaires, uh, poll results. They would literally take him out. There'd be first, second, and fourth place, and pull him out. And John Stewart made a funny show about that, if you want to call it funny. So this is another question about the media, and then. Uh, something that sort of frames it is Jenk Leeger, who has this show, The Young Turks, uh, on YouTube, was hired uh, mainly, I think, by Dylan Radigan, who thought he was really uh, brilliant. He brought him in, and he was told, uh, you know, it's cool to be a rebel like James Dean, um, but uh, we're the establishment. Uh, and he reported this publicly after he left the show. And there's nothing like a disgruntled employee to blow the whistle. Um, so then you have to ask the question why when Obama talked about being a constitutional lawyer and so forth he never transmitted that he wasn't somewhat of a centrist um, he wasn't in Congress at the time that the original Patriot Act was passed but he did vote for the Patriot Act recertification so we knew there was something wrong with him already he didn't vote for the war because he wasn't in Congress I think Obama did something while he was in Congress the others didn't do. But I'd, I have to figure out what exactly that is in terms of taking a stand for uh, decency. Um, so, But since he came into office, he's escalated the use of Patriot Act, escalated the use of extrajudicial assassination of American citizens. He has reduced our rights. And in my opinion, um, these things are treason, and that the people who are doing these things of undermining the Constitution, subverting the Bill of Rights, should be indicted and put on trial, and have probably their citizenship stripped from them as a man without a country did, because what they're doing is trying to destroy our republic, in my view. And um, so then you've got the war on terror, which cause, is a terrible drag on our economy, achieves nothing except makes us enemies. So why are we doing it? Um, this is my personal view. I don't. I know you may not share my view, and I forgive me. This is a uh, results presentation, having analyzed this problem. Uh, so the objectivity is somewhat off because we're introducing the results, uh, and the results condemn these things, in my view. Um, but in the first four sequences, I, I hope I did not. Uh, come out with the result. I was trying to build the data model. What do we know? Uh, so we have the uh, war on, so the war on terror uh, produces a huge amount of profits for certain companies. Um, and all of the losses are paid for by the taxpayers. It's like a casino. 
and um, the military industrial complex is a house and we're the marks, we're the gamblers, except this odds aren't with one person uh, you know, take by the house, so you always lose, and they always win. Um, and so why is that so, and how is that so? And then we have the same thing at the state level, which is the correctional system in the United States. The war on drugs produces a similar industry for each state. Um, so what happens is the county has an incentive to lock people up and send them that are troublemakers because the state pays for it. In other words, they stick the bill to the other 50 counties. So the rural counties lock up all the guys they don't like, send them to the state prison. Then they have a quieter county and somebody else is paying the bill, which is the urban counties. Uh, San Mateo County in California, uh, the wealthy counties in Southern California, uh, Marin County, these company counties all pay for the Central Valley, the foothills, and the uh, regions that have ultra rightist judges that will lock people up at the drop of a hat. Um, and I think that um, rehab is probably handled at the county level, so they use a perverse incentive. And the corrections, people sell uh, goods into it, people are hired by it, and so um, so it creates the same problem. So why is this going on? What is the common denominator? We follow the money. Um, so here's uh, the layout briefly. Okay. We want to look at um, this one here. So basically this is a media. ABC, Disney owns ABC. Um, Disney has a lot of um, conservatives in it and it also has a lot of people that are uh, very you know brilliant artists uh, that are Jewish uh, that started these things but they were conservative and pro-Israel and this may be a factor in why we're engaged in the Middle East to the level we are. Disney ABC is considered second only to Fox and it's cons uh, pro-military industrial complex point of view as far as People have said, now then you've got CBS, Viacom, Comedy Central, owned by Sumner Rothstein. Uh, General Electric owns NBC. CNN is owned by Time Warner. And News Corp is owned by Fox News. So these are the constellation of companies that control uh, the um, media. <clears throat> and then um, these are the six guys who run the world's money. Um, they are fund managers that handle um, most of the world's uh, money that's invested into private corporations. Um, and then here's the assets under manage, 15.5 trillion. Here are global assets. I have all this posted on microtopia.org uh, pretty much. Um, and so then how does it all work together? We have these billionaires, because ultimately companies, stockholders, uh, these uh, systems are owned by people. So the, we can concentrate on the billionaires in America who control 10% um, uh, of, uh, uh, of the money in the country and 20% of the publicly traded stock. And um, you can draw the line at the top 10 people or the top 100,000 people. This is one way to describe it. You have neocons that are hard right, centrists, Neocon light, and then other, such as, in my view, uh, the new money from Silicon Valley isn't quite uh, plugged into those things necessarily in the same fashion as old money. Um, so these billionaires, their money is handed over to these investment fund managers to try to get a good return on it in at least part, which is uh, basically private equity. And um, the private equity firms um, and these uh, tr these fund managers invest in corporations, and those corporations uh, they form part of this military industrial complex. But it's really more than that now. It's a military, um, media, financial, construction, energy, consulting, uh, security, pharma, intellectual property complex. It's all part of invasion and disaster capitalism. 
So our uh, competitors are Brazil, Russia, India, China, Indonesia, Mexico, and Turkey. They None of them have any debt. They're all growing 7 to 12 percent. We're growing very slowly. We have a lot of debt. So the only way we can beat them is on the battlefield. It's not 